In this video, I would like to add Redux Thunk to our Redux TypeScript application, and that will allow for asynchronous actions to be dispatched. So, so far, our Redux TypeScript app has this state where you can add and minus, and this will be logged to the console with the Redux logger, which will show us the operation reducer. Now in this video we also want to add multiple reducers and we're going to get a particular user as a asynchronous request. So first things first, we're going to need to install Redux Thunk. So let's just go ahead and we can install that with an npm install redux thunk. So let's get that. And while that's loading, I also I just want to add something to the HTML. So right now we're only dealing with one sort of reducer and one sort of um, set of actions, and now we want to extend this button. So there's not only an add and a minus button, but they also can be a get user button, and that has a get user ID, and then there's the place we render it, which is just with an ID user. So if we save that, and we can see that we get this get user button here. So we need to go ahead and hook up our application with this Redux thunk. So first things first, we need to go to the root store and we need to apply some middleware. So Redux Thunk is a middleware that intercepts our actions that get um, sent to the store and our reducers that deal with those such that we can uh, make the asynchronous request which isn't included Redux by default. So in the root store here, what we can do is we can import Redux Thunk. So import. Um, so we need the Thunk middleware to be able to do this. And we can go ahead and import Thunk as well. And that Thunk middleware is just a type um, provided to us by Redux Thunk. So let's just go ahead and get that. And what this will allow us to do is in our middleware, we can apply, and we can apply as many middleware as we like with a comma, uh, comma separation. Um, we want Thunk, and we can use TypeScript to assert it to the Thunk middleware type. So Thunk middleware. And what this will do is it will take the application state. So it will take the application state, but it will also take the app actions. So we're going to need that. So we import that from the models in the app actions. And we're going to need to extend it, but the app state we need to create. So we can export the application state, which is a type. And it's essentially a return type, which is built into TypeScript. And it's going to take the type of our root reducer here. And our root reducer essentially has all of our state for our application. So we're extending um, this application to have multiple reducers and that's why we set up this combined reducers earlier so now um, once we create the um, you know the next reducer we can add it in here and then this app state will have the state of the operation reducer and the um, you know the asynchronous reducer and we might call it that the asynchronous reducer and I've actually got this summary.md file of how we're going to extend the folder structure. So, so, so far we've had the index, the store, the root store. Um, we're going to add some things to the global models, just a little bit of the actions. And we're also going to mainly focus on this async 
uh, folder here which has its own models and actions and um, reduces and its own um, interface here. So you can already start to see that once you set this sort of infrastructure up, you can sort of repeat the steps. Um, so that's where it comes in handy. And it also, um, you know, provides a consistent way to be able to do that. So once we can handle asynchronous requests, we can pretty much repeat these and manage our state. So let's do the um, Redux stunt to handle that case. So, okay, and there needs to be a comma separation here. You probably picked that up already. And I'll just save that and that will reformat it with Prettier. So we'll come back to this file, but um, I might just close a few things up. So we can just pretty much close all this up. And I'll close this as well for now. And okay, we'll start to work on our async folder. And I should mention what we're, what we're doing here is we're going to send a asynchronous request from our um, index.ts file. Well, we'll have a button that can be hooked up to that action to dispatch an action to use, um, and it'll probably be to like JSON placeholder or another thing just to get a some fake data back of a user. So that's why we got this user interface here, and it's just going to be like, you know, a title and an ID and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and create that. So in our folder structure, we can create this async folder in our store. So I'm going to call this async, and I don't know. Oh, you probably wouldn't actually name it async, but this is just to demonstrate the asynchronous section. You'd call it whatever like it might be called user, for example, in your case. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep these um, ab as abstract as possible. So inside the async folder, we can create a new folder, models, and this is just gonna be um, containing our user interface, for one thing. And this user interface, what we can do is we can declare an interface user so it's accessible everywhere in our application without import and this is just going to be a user ID which is of a number type an ID which is also of a number type a title which will be a string and completed which is a boolean um, and you can use whatever you like here whatever your um, request object is going to be. This is just predefined uh, from the JSON placeholder. So we've got our user interface. So we want to create our models for our actions. So in this models, we can create our actions dot type script, and we can close this up now. And we're going to mimic what we did in our operation. So we made our action types, and we no longer need to have that comment there. And I might just actually copy this structure here, and we can copy this over into this file. So there's going to be three cases here. Um, we're going to make the request, so the request is going to be pending. So I might call this fetch user pending and I'll copy this here into here and I might copy into the next sections here as well like that and I'm just going to change the word pending for the second case to fulfilled so you know you make an asynchronous request it's pending and it's either going to be fulfilled or rejected so I can go ahead and say have this type here for filled and have this other one for rejected and we're going to create three interfaces here I'll just start off with this first one so it's sort of something action so I'll just call it pending action for the first case and it's going to have a type 
which will be the type of fetch user pending. I can add this. And we're also going to use that user object we created um, and recall in Redux um, and state management, you have a initial value for that. So um, this will actually, this can be on the pending and rejected actions as well. Um, although we're getting the user back when it's fulfilled, we need sort of a default um, case. So what we can do here is I'm just going to call it user of the type user. And we can duplicate this three times. And I'm just going to rename one of these interfaces to fulfilled. So I'll call this one um, fulfilled. And I'll just do a control shift P and transform this to uppercase here. And I will also change this to rejected. And I'll do the same thing for this one. So now that we've got our interfaces for the certain types that we're using, the pending, fulfilled, and rejected, we can go ahead and export this um, sort of union type here. So I'm going to call this async action types. So async action types. And this is going to be either the pending action, the fulfilled action, or the rejected action. I don't know what happened there. Uh, must have overridden it. Okay, so we've got this async action types. And recall in our global models that we had a um, the actions for all of our actions. So now we've got a second actions. This makes a little bit more sense. So I've got here our, all of our actions are either going to be operation action types or they're going to be some other type. And that's the type we just created, the async action types. So we can go ahead and we can just import that. And now we have our app actions to contain the operation action types, which is, you know, the add, the minus. And we also have these um, asynchronous ones now with the pending, the fulfilled, the rejected. So we can go ahead and we can just close that up now. And actually we can close this up as well. And now we can move on to actually creating the reducer itself. So we want to um, come up with the cases. So just outside of this uh, models file folder, I'm going to create a file called async reducer with capital first letters .ts. And this is outside the models because this is the actual implementation of it. And okay, we're going to need those async action types that we just created. So let's go ahead and import those. So async action types and we make those in the models folder so we can access the models folder access the actions and actually i might open up the operation reducer just to sort of copy and i will copy this here and just close that and paste that in here we're going to change this so now we have the default state which is going to be the user and rather than this count um, we actually we might just open this user object up we can get these values here from it so we can close that now and for the user ID and I might just uh, let's see make these commas except for that last one there this user ID um, so we'll make the user ID just, you know, zero and the ID zero and the title a blank string and completed to false just so we have the default uh, state. And now with that, <coughs> we can um, export this um, and we'll call this the async reducer. 
and it takes the default state but rather than the operation action types it's going to take these async action types so we can plug that in there like that and for our next state um, the next state we will um, oh and yeah okay so we need to have another case here we need our three cases for our three types so let's just get those um, action types up that can be passed to those so we've got our fetch user pending so I can go ahead and plug that in here fetch user pending And these, these are the actions, so these can be strings, strings not, not rather than the type, even though they're, they're sort of aligning, aligning to the same thing in this case. Um, we'll just have that separation there. Um, okay, so <coughs> since we've got this um, sort of default state here, we can just return that default state, which is just this object here. Um, now, in the case, so I'm going to just delete this next state actually. Um, and for okay, we'll do the fulfill case first because that's you make the request and um, actually, okay, so the pending state you make the request, so the fetch user is pending, and what we can do here is rather than return this next state thing, what we can do is we can just return um, a new state. So this um, dot 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 syntax will um, put their state into a new object. Um, so it's not the same, you know, it's, it's the immutability principle still hold. Um, but yeah, so while we're pending the state, which is whatever the state is, that's what the state is, so we don't really need to do anything there. But we do need to return a state, so, uh, and likewise with the default state. Now, for the fetch user fulfill case, so we make a API request, and if it's successful, we need to return a new state, and this new state is going to be whatever the action is um, with the user because recall that we the action has a type but it also has a user which is um, the user object which we retrieve back from it that we can receive so that can be that and that can be the same for the user rejected case so um, and you know we'll set, we'll set up these default values in just a tick if it's rejected um, we might have different values to these values maybe we'll have minus one here instead but for now we're just setting up the reducer um, to get it going sort of thing so the next thing is after the reducer is we can create our async actions so let's do that. And once again, I'm going to open up what we've done over here and expand on it. So, okay. So I'll just copy that over. I'll close this. Close the reducer. And we can close this. Okay, so in this async action, um, we're going to need the three types that we just created. So in the models, in the actions, we're going to need the um, these three fetch user uh, types. So the pending, the fulfilled. So pending, fulfilled, rejected. 
and they're from the same section because we laid out the structure the same way. And we can also get the app actions as well from the uh, global models. Uh, so recall, we just created those and they include the operation action types but also the async action types. So that's cool, we've got those from the same spot. And now we can create our action creators. And, okay. So for our action creators, we're gonna have three cases here. So the first is we request the user. So I'll call this request user. And this is gonna be able to return the actions type. And our act actions type, they has this uh, user data associated with it as well. So in addition to the type, which will be fetch user pending, we're also going to have this user. And we can create the, um, you know, we can use the default one here if we like. So from the reducer, we can just copy this object here and, you know, set it to that. So that's one of our action creators. Uh, we'll also need a we need three of these, we need one for each case. So I'll call one return user. Return user and we'll also have the error user. And for the error user, I might just pass in this other one. Um, so I'll have negative one, negative one error here like that and for the return case uh, okay I'll just pass in our actions here so I'll pass that in there and pass the rejected case in there like that now this user case here well we can't preset this because we're getting this from the API um, but what we can do is um, we can expect that we're going to get some JSON syntax from our um, our bound action creator. So we'll make a bound action creator, and it will return some JSON data. And so we can use this dot 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 JSON sort of syntax here. And this isn't created yet, so it's good that this is erring. But what we'll do is we'll create those um, action creators, uh, the bound action creators or their equivalent, let's say. Um, so, okay, so to do that, we need to, um, so how we're gonna use this is we're gonna click on a button from the HTML page and we're gonna dispatch an action. So that means we're gonna have, you know, some sort of event, a listener, um, that's listening for the click and that's where we're gonna consume this uh, asynchronous sort of request. So we're gonna to have to export a function here. And I might just export this function. Now I'm gonna call it fetch user. And within this fetch user, um, we need to return a dispatch function. So we can return dispatch and this is of the type dispatch and we can import that through uh, let's see here where is that from Redux so I might actually put that at the top and I'll just put that there like that Okay, so we've got the dispatch type. We're, we call the function fetch user, returning this other function. And it takes a dispatch. So, okay, so let's make this an arrow function. 
and what this will do is this is like a function callback sort of essentially so what this will do is it will dispatch one of our functions for us so we've created these action creative um, functions so in the first case we want to request the user so we can go ahead and we can dispatch a request user here like this and um, you know Redux Stunk and knows how to handle this essentially um, so you know it will wait for this uh, to happen and then what we can do from within here is you know it requests the user um, you know which is this action creator we made here so it has this action fetch user pending um, and you know after it's pending it's either going to be fulfilled or rejected so what we can do to handle that is we can have this return and I'm going to make a fetch call here and what I'm going to use for this API request is a JSON placeholder typeco.com slash to do's and this is where we got the user ID the ID the title and completed um, and that's why I made that user object interface before. So anyway, we'll use the fetch API API for this. So you can use S six uh, back ticks, and we can just paste that in. Um, and we want to have some sort of random number here. So I'll I'll pass in some random number here, and we need to create that, of course. So uh, I might just do that here. So we'll make a random number, and to do this we can just access the uh, math library, and we can take the floor of some math uh, dot random number here, and this will be a number you know between one and four or something like that. So we can do that, and then we can just plus one so we don't get the uh, zero case. Uh, I think that's all right. Yep. And, okay, so we need to do a little bit more here. This fetch, what this will do is it will return a promise. So we need to handle that promise. Um, and we can do that in a uh, dot then sort of thing. So to handle the promise, we can take whatever the response is, which is that user object we just seen, and we can sort of map that and one thing we need to do is because it's in JSON is we need to um, we need to return another sort of promise which will be the JSON uh, version of that and we also need to handle the errors and we don't do it in the catch block because uh, that, that has some blocking effect in this uh, Redux stunk here but what we can do is with a comma separation in this Dot then we can say okay if an error occurs uh, what we can do is um, we can handle that so we can just console log this error and we'll handle that in just a moment um, but in the case that um, so if it does error we need to dispatch another action so we need to dispatch the um, error user uh, is that what we called it? Yeah, error user function just here. And that will dispatch that next action. Uh, and then, you know, it'll have the negative one, negative one, and all that. And this JSON is going to come in just as tick. Um, so that's that, that handles the error case. Um, but if it didn't error, we, we're waiting for this promise here for the response JSON. So, uh, Let's see here. Uh, here we can try and resolve this next promise, and it's going to be in JSON format this time. So we can take this JSON format, and if there's no error, what we can do is we can um, dispatch the return user JSON. So this uh, return user. And I should note that this return user, this is going to return a user. Um, 
it's going to take some JSON, and this JSON is going to be of the type user. Uh, so we can plug this in here, return user, and we can get that JSON back. So that's just what we uh, seen from the API. And just before I finish off on that, um, I might just do some error handling, let's say. So um, just below this random numbers here, I'm just gonna say let as error equals false, because currently if there is an error, it will still go to this next then block. We wanna prevent that from occurring. So we can just say has error equals false. And you know, if this has not errored, so if that's false, then okay, there's no error. But if there was an error, what we can do is we can um, we can just you know essentially set this to has errored equals true. So I'll save that. And that is our asynchronous action here. So we've done a little fair bit here. So what, let's just sort of recap what we did. So from the user interface, we want to be able to click a button. We want to get a user. And in response to that action being dispatched, that action being dispatched will go to a store um, and they'll call the reducer and that reducer can handle the three cases that either, you know, we're pending, we're waiting for a response, it's been fulfilled or it's been rejected. So we made those types in those models and we also extended our models actions. Um, we then, created our action creators. So request user, return user, and error user. And they uh, return, you know, app actions of those types. And, you know, we plugged in some dummy sort of data for the user for the pending and the error case. But more interestingly for the return user, um, you know, we want to get something from the JSON data, namely this action being fulfilled. So to do that um, in our, you know, I don't even know if this is necessarily a bound action creator anymore, but in this um, fetch user function here, you know, Redux and Redux Stunk and the dispatch, they sort of handle this for us in a way to handle this asynchronous expectation. Um, so, you know, we dispatch an action, which is a function itself, uh, and then that calls this request user, and, you know, you know, waits for something to happen, and then, um, you know, I just set a few variables here, but what we're really doing is we're making a fetch call using this fetch API to JSON placeholder for some random number to get a user JSON response back. And then we handle those. And in the first case, you know, we get the response in JSON and then it doesn't go to this error, but we goes into the next promise block, which does something with the JSON. If there's no error, it will dispatch the return error JSON. So that's where we get that JSON value from otherwise it will call and that's this uh, destructured JSON object here. So that's sort of a recap um, and I think I said reducer before I meant to say uh, action I'm sure you picked up on that as well um, but yeah they, they go hand in hand together so um, so what we can do now is we can sort of, okay, we can make our bounded uh, function call now. So we can export a constant, and I'll call this bound fetch user, opposed to just fetch user, which will be a ES6 arrow function. And this will 
Okay, so we did need the store. And we can dispatch um, this uh, function that we just created here. So we just essentially need a wrapper to make the dispatch. So we can do that. Oh, I get some nice music here. Uh, okay. So that bound fetch user is it's a wrapper for this fetch user, which dispatches this action, and that gets handled via this function. So what we can do from here is okay. We've got this set up. We've got all our type set up. What we can do? Uh, do we need to add something to the root store here? I think that's okay. Um, okay, so in the index.ts file, we need to handle the click event, but we're going to need that function, so we can import that and. Okay, so we've got our store from the root store. That's that's what I wanted to make sure that we had. Because uh, I deleted that a little earlier. But yeah, it's from the root store opposed to somewhere else. So now the only thing left to do is to add the... to dispatch the action. So we can do that in the index TypeScript file. So let's go ahead and open that up. And we'll just need to import that function we just created, so that's the bound fetch user, and that's from the store in the uh, async section, in the, oops, the async action. So that's where that is, and now we just need to use it. So, what we can do is we can just create a. Uh, we need to access the button, so let's just get that. So the user L is the document. We get the element by ID, the user element, and that's not null, so we'll tell type through that with a bang. And okay. Oh, so that's the element. Um, that we're going to render into, but the um, button that we're going to click is get element by ID. That's the uh, get user. So that's also with a bang. And we'll add an event listener here, which will listen out for a click. And we can pass in this arrow function callback and this will call this bound fetcher user. Um, so recall that what this is doing is it's um, dispatching the action. We still need to do something with that. So after we got it, um, you know, we want to change our HTML. So after we get that, then we want to do something after we've got that, and we can just actually get the state and get get um, that from the store with the get state method. And for that user element that we had just before, which is where we're going to render it, we can change the inner HTML and we can set that equal. And we'll just use some back ticks. So we can say that, and I won't list all the objects. I'll just do two maybe. So the state and okay one thing we need to do is we need to um, oh actually we did that before well, we got two multiple reducers now so we can access that um, and I believe it's the ID I'm just wondering why this is erring at the moment um, let's see Argument for listener. Uh, 
Hmm, I'm not sure. I'll just keep going for now. Title. And this is also going to be on the state. Async reducer Got the title. Um, okay, so what's wrong with this? Is it just this extra bracket here, maybe? Yes, there's an extra bracket. Okay, so, okay, and I'm going to have to import that uh, async reducer. Uh, let's see, I think reducer does not exist on combined state of the type operation reducer. Okay. Some action types. Oh, we need to add this reducer in here. So, must have forgot to do that before. Um, I knew I had to do something in the root store. Um, okay, so, what is this? Async reducer. So, async reducer. Async reducer. And we can just import that. Save that. And now we have our async reducer. Now we should have everything we need to be able to make our asynchronous requests and manage multiple state. Okay. So we can get the user. Okay. That does not work. One thing I may need to do is run a npm run dev because I wasn't those weren't being bundled up for me. Okay, I didn't get any errors, so that's promising. Oh, I didn't get a cannot read add event listener of null. Okay, oh, that's a silly typo. That should just be a lowercase s. Save this. Okay, no errors. That's a good sign. Get error, get user. Yep. Okay, so that's worked for us and we can see with the logger that our initial state that was the zero zero um, no title complete false and then we made a pending action and then you know we still had that state but after that occurred the asynchronous request to JSON placeholder was successful so we get this fetch user fulfilled and just before that had that same initial state but when this action was performed you know it, it got that um, user JSON formatted out there like that and then and now our next state was this and notice that we have both the state of the async reducer and the operation reducer you know we can add some things here minus some things here get another user wait for a second for that to change um, okay, it didn't change. Could have got the same one. I've only got uh, three or four. Okay, so now oh, I was just pending, and then now it's changed to two. It's outputted that on the console, uh, on our DOM for us. And yeah, and now if you look at the next state, it has this state of account and manages the state of multiple things for us. And you can really start to see how this would be really quite useful and one thing I'll just do just before it ends um, I'll just make an error occur here so I'll just say HTTPS dot you know I'll put a Z here or something like that and now if I get the user I'm expecting the error case okay so we've got this error here and we call the fetch user rejected so our next state and it did indeed have this negative one negative one so I'll change this back and I'll just do a quick recap of everything we've done so in the first video we pretty much we introduced Redux and you know we've um, built upon a Redux um, TypeScript 
sort of webpack thing, although we didn't get into the TypeScript specifics of it. So we understand how Redux works and the four main things. So we've got the user interface, we fire an action, the action's dispatched to the store, the store has a reducer, and the reducer is a pure function and it is essentially a switch statement that handles the different cases, um, you know, for the different types, and it returns us a new state uh, rather than the same state um, appended. And this is how that, that, that's Redux, and then we added TypeScript to that, and we structured our folder structure and we ended up with something like this. So we have our source file here with index TypeScript file. Now this index TypeScript file is just because we're not using a framework. If we're using something like React or Angular or something like that, this would be done in the component level or a view. So in the view, you might have some sort of, you know, you might have a card component or something that displays data and then that same data might be displayed in the navigation bar perhaps and you know we want to we don't want to sort of change the state and in multiple places and you know we might have a pop-up and a, a modal and data is passed in through multiple components um, in the uh, hierarchy um, so we can sort of already start to see how Redux is helpful and in what circumstances we'll need it in our projects. Um, and we came up with a simple sort of um, scalable folder structure here where we have the root store here and then you know we have the root models consisting of the um, global actions which is the combination of our um, more module specific actions. So in our case we had the operation and the asynchronous actions um, and then you know we had those two sort of module sections so we had the operation and each module that we implement will have its own models or, so interfaces and types um, and more importantly the action and reducer um, so then we we seen uh, Redux logger and we've seen that log out nicely formatted middleware for us that's just a dev dependency just while we're developing obviously you don't need that in production but it's really nice while you're working and then we had a look at another middleware um, Redux thunk and that just handles the asynchronous requests for us because by default um, you know these sorts of fetching and other you know Axios and other sorts of um, asynchronous requests uh, APIs they don't handle that for us uh, I mean they handle that for us but they don't work within these in the context of um, Redux so Redux Thunk is a middle where that sort of intercepts that and allows for that and it's all set up like that um, and yeah so that's a pretty good introduction to Redux. Really hope you enjoyed it. I um, hope you're using the power of TypeScript and Redux together and yeah if you like that please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got new videos coming out every week. Cheers. <laughs>